meeting. Mrs. Bass, would you take the roll, please? District 1, Barbara McQuinn. Here. District 2, Chuck Shaw. Here. District 3, Karen Brill. She's off the line, so absent. Uh, District 4, Erica Whitfield. Here. District 5, Frank Barbieri. Here. District 6, Marcia Andrews. Here. District 7, Deborah Robinson. All right, we have quorum. This is a meeting for school safety and security, EPSAT finding special meeting. Mr. Superintendent. Yes, sir. At this time, I'd like to bring forward uh, Chief Frank Hitzero. Uh, who will be presenting our school safety and security uh, FSAT findings. This is a, uh, and, and other team members that he'd like to bring with him. This is part of um, uh, the new work that the state is doing as it relates to safety and security. Obviously, Chief Kitsaro um, is the head of our police department, and he and his team have been working feverishly to be in compliance. And at this time, he will give a brief overview of his findings and recommendations to the board. Turn his microphone on, please. Try it now, Chief. We on now? Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Uh, before I give uh, my report, I just wanted to take a moment to just thank the people that you see here at the table with me. Uh, these are the folks that do the heavy lift on the, on this FSAT uh, project, and it's been going on for months, and, uh, and I'm proud to say that we're in 100% compliance, and in large part because of the work that um, Barbara and Lynn and Kathy do, along with Major Mel Mosier. And as I go through, you're gonna see the, the magnitude of this project. So well, you thank know, you to this, them. If I may, the, when I met with you and saw that, that stack, that thick, I thought that was all 200 and some schools, and then you said, no, that's for one school, and you had to do that 200 and how many times? It's like, I'm amazed that you were able to get that done in the short period of time you got it done. So thank you all for a job well done. Thank you. So um, as I go through, uh, first of all, I wanted to start out with the responsibilities for the school safety specialist. As you know, I wear two hats, the chief of police and the school safety specialist. And so as the school safety specialist, I'm required to do several things. Number one is to conduct a school security risk assessment at each public school um, using the Florida Safe Schools Assessment Tool, more commonly referred to as an FSAT. That project has been going on through, from, uh, from July through mid-September of this year. Uh, as you also know that I have to share the FSAT findings and recommendations for improvement at a publicly noticed school board meeting to provide the public an opportunity to hear the school board members discuss and take actions on the findings and recommendations. That's the purpose of being here today. Uh, and then each school safety specialist shall report such findings and school board action to the Office of Safe Schools within 30 days after this district school board meeting or by October 24th uh, of this year. We will be uh, uh, well ahead of schedule on that and, uh, and be making that report. So um, the Florida Safe School Assessment Tool as, as we, uh, Mr. Barbieri pointed out, one FSAT must be completed per school campus annually. Um, when you look at that form, each FSAT is over 140 pages long and contains three parts. The first is the school profile, and that is the first 93 pages. That's com uh, completed at the school level uh, by the principal, staff, officer on campus, and um, under the direction of Barbara Terumbus, who drives a a mean boat there, a mean ship, to get them all done. Uh, and they go through and they look at all kinds of uh, pieces of information there. It's a really comprehensive uh, uh, tool. The next part that happens after that is done, and we have to go through and actually do a campus tour with the first responders that will be responding to that particular school. And that includes police, fire, sheriff's department. And we walk that campus with the principal and all the first responders, or representatives of the first responder groups from that area. That's an additional 40 pages and that comes after the original profile. And then the final piece is the strategic security plan, and, uh, and that's an additional 10 pages or so. So uh, as uh, Mr. Barbieri pointed out, it's a pretty comprehensive uh, document. 
So over 220 FSATs were completed. There are roughly 172 district operated schools and 51 charter schools. Um, there's also a 32 page uh, district summary report required and I'll be sharing that with you during a closed session on October 16th, 2019 due to the sensitive security information that that document specifically includes. As I go forward with my recommendations tonight, we'll be looking into five general areas. One is safety and security, uh, personal, personnel enhancements. The second is perimeter security. Technology enhancements is three. Training and, per, and procedure enhancements for four. And then area five will be community collaboration. So as we look through and we evaluate the FSATs itself, these are the recommendations for area one, safety and security. Uh, personnel enhancements. First of all, I want to begin by saying uh, that we have a school safety officer, sworn law enforcement officer on every campus in this district, all of our district schools and every charter schools. We've had them since day one and we continue to have them uh, today. And as we progress through uh, the next few months, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that uh, all of those campuses are kept safe. Uh, uh, let's see, the, um, one of the things that, is, uh, that I think will be needing some attention is that uh, several charter schools noted their desire in, the, uh, in their choices that they made for one of four choices as required by Senate Bill 7030. They've indicated their desire to participate in the Guardian program, which is yet to be formally established here uh, in Palm Beach County by the Sheriff's Office. So my recommendations in this area is that we continue the district-wide initiative about implementing a 3-2-1 baseline model. Uh, the goal is to have approximately one school safety officer or school police officer for every thousand students at a given campus on the, in the uh, district schools. Also, in terms of charters, additional board action uh, would be needed to clarify to PBSO that a formal guardian program must be established with training beginning immediately in addition to the annual firearms training for security guards. Um, we're recommending that this uh, process be implemented for charters to verify their own school safety officer coverage for 2021 school year. Under perimeter securities on area two, uh, the school district is in the process of, of receiving uh, enhanced perimeter security, which is being addressed and prioritized according to highest need. Uh, Ms. Paul and the, and the team there has done an amazing job, especially over the summer, of continuing that project. In any of those areas where we don't have physical security present, uh, we have supplemented that with secondary uh, security plans that involve um, you know, people uh, on campus and specialized plans to accommodate things like single points of entry and that kind of stuff. So uh, on the charters, many schools are located in facilities where enhancing perimeter security can prove challenging. And then uh, as, you, as you know, some of these charter schools are in strip malls and it's very challenging to, to, uh, to, to take care of the perimeter security uh, in those environments because they're really not standalone buildings. And so currently the district doesn't have any authority to govern the location of a charter school. And uh, in many cases, local jurisdictions also have limited control over the zoning requirements. So that is a little bit challenging. Uh, continuing on with the perimeter security, um, the district operated schools that uh, recommending that the district uh, continue the district-wide initiative to provide schools with enhanced security features like cameras, card readers, security film, and all those things that we've been working diligently to put in place at all of our schools. And we continue to repair fencing and gates as needed. Under um, the charters, again, the district does not have any authority to govern the location of a charter school. Currently, there's no way for the district to enforce compliance with best practices related to school hardening as established by the uh, Department of Education and the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Commission. So re requesting guidance from the legislature on school hardening requirements, along with adequate funding to implement uh, these uh, recommendations at all of these schools. In terms of technology, we want to continue with the Wi-Fi uh, enhancements. Um, that has been a very remarkable project and, uh, and it has really helped us from a security perspective. 
uh, in terms of our abilities to communicate, interact with the camera systems, and a number of other things. Um, you know, we're continuing in this recommendation to include the funding for ongoing upgrades to the district's uh, network and Wi-Fi access points. This, this project has, a, um, has been very successful, as I've said, and has a great deal of potential for the future. Currently under charters, there's no way for the district to enforce compliance in this particular area. And again, requesting guidance from legislature on technology requirements along with adequate funding to implement all of these uh, changes. In area four, training and procedure enhancements. Uh, as you could imagine, legislation has required many, many new training programs and, you know, and things throughout the district. I'm here to tell you that we are in compliance with those requirements um, and that we continue to enhance our abilities. One of the things that we'll be doing in the coming year is uh, making those training classes even more available through either video, PowerPoints, and, and drilling down to the actual people who are taking those classes to ensure they're spending the appropriate uh, period amount of time doing so. So in our recommendations uh, for district-operated schools, there may be some additional funding needed to provide outside training, um, uh, outside of regular duty days. And um, again, we're hoping that that should be minimal and uh, we should continue to evaluate existing school safety and security related policies. So I wanted to put that in there because that is an ongoing thing. That is something that sh we should be doing regularly and we will continue to do because the dynamics of security change, uh, as you see uh, out there and we follow things that happen in other places, the, the, um, you know, the different types of threats and challenges that we face always require us to be uh, ahead of the game and update policies uh, and keep us out in front. And then in terms of charters, continuing to monitor charter schools for compliance with all statutory required training and procedure mandates. Um, and for us, we'll be formally documenting all instances of noncompliance and, uh, and recommend that we notify the Department of Education accordingly. And then finally, in Area 5, the community collaboration, I'm pleased to report to you that we have very strong relationships in our community, not only among the first responders, but also with a lot of our key stakeholders that keep us working in the prevention, intervention, and diversion pieces out in front of the actual threat, uh, you know, the actual catastrophic events themselves. And so the recommendation is that the district should continue to leverage these relationships in service of the safety and security of all of our schools. This is really an important piece right here, the collaboration piece. So in summary of recommendations, is, uh, this is just to go over them real fast. In the area one, safety and security, uh, the 321 baseline model for district operated schools, approximately a one to 1,000 ratio. Um, recommending that PBSO should fulfill a request by charters to establish a guardian program as intended by legislature and continue annual firearms training to security guards and implement the process for charters to verify long-term plans for school safety officer coverage. Under perimeters, continue district-wide initiative to provide schools with enhanced perimeter security, request guidance from the legislature on requirements on how to enforce the compliance. Uh, in terms of technology, continued funding for Wi-Fi enhancements throughout the schools, and request guidance from the legislature on requirements on how to enforce compliance for charters. The training and procedures enhancements, continuous review of existing district policies, continue monitoring efforts for charters and formally document instances of noncompliance, and finally under the communi uh, community collaboration, continue to leverage those relationships with first responders, business partners, government agencies, and, uh, and other key stakeholders. So uh, in closing, uh, what we request from the board this evening, that you acknowledge and accept the FSAT finding summary review today. Uh, these recommendations reflect the strategies and activities the district should implement in order to address the FSAT findings. And just a reminder that we will uh, have a closed session to discuss sensitive safety and security efforts, uh, which is scheduled for October 16th of 2019. And then at that time, we'll provide you with the 32-page district summary report for your uh, vote and approval. Mr. Chairman, that's my report. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chief Kitzrow. I have a question for you. Um, on slide five, 
It says additional board action needed to clarify to PBSO that a formal guardian program must be established. So do you need to have the board vote on that? I guess you're gonna have to bring, superintendent's gonna have to bring back to us a board item at the next meeting so that we can formally do that if that's what's required for us to, uh, to, to tell the, I guess we have to tell the sheriff that that's one of the requests we've had from the charter school, so he's got to do it, right? Is that the law, what the law requires? That's correct, that's what the law requires and we're working with the legal department to, to uh, make that process happen. Okay, so Mr. Superintendent, you'll bring back an item for us to vote on on that one? Yeah, we discovered several weeks ago that it actually needs, a formal request from the board needs to go to the sheriff. So to, to reiterate what the chief said, um, Blair and his team, Julian and his team are working through that now. Okay, and one other question. In a lot of the places you, you, you say, you recommend that we get guidance from the legislature. So are you doing, is, is the administration doing that or you need the board to do that? I don't understand where that's coming from. Re requesting the guidance. No, we, 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 are, we are taking all those recommendations and we were working with our lobbyists and we, we will be um, speaking directly with the DOE. Um, the board should, should know that about two days ago I sent you a copy of a letter that I sent directly to the DOE and that is gonna be our efforts moving forward is making sure that they're fully aware of all of our efforts and to ask, seek guidance from them moving forward. So administration will handle that, Mr. Bobby. Any, Mrs. Andrews. And thank you to our chief and our school police department. You have been awesome. It has been a, a big job following all the work that you had to do to secure offices in every school, including charters. So hooray for a job well done. And as I sat down and went through this report, I want to thank you all because it was a lot of work. And I want to thank our principals because they had a lot of work to kind of get it done. We're on time, we're on record, and we're ready. And yes, um, Mr. Barbieri, the legislative piece is a big piece here as we look at what has to be done. But I can tell you, I feel real comfortable when I'm out in the public saying that our school police is really on it. And thank you, I see you're on the agenda for the Royal Palm Beach Educational Advisory Committee. And you're all over the community letting people know that you, our school district is doing everything that we can do to make sure everyone is safe. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Andrews. And uh, again, it's a direct reflection of the work here. And I'm really lucky to work with a team like this. I'm so proud of these folks. Any other comments? So the board members probably should know that today we swore in nine more police officers, Chief. We did. We did. And we have how many coming next week? Uh, 11 on next Monday. Fantastic job. Thank you for Thank you so job much. well done to you and your team. Is there any more discussion? We'll. Um, Vote on a motion. Yes, sir. Can I go? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I recommend the board acknowledge and accept the presentation and direct the superintendent, I guess that's me, to bring back an item for board approval and action on October the 16th, 2019. Mr. Shaw, seconded by Dr. Robinson. Any discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries 6-0. Superintendent, do you have anything else for us? Mr. Chairman, I have nothing else. Motion for adjournment. Mrs. Whitfield, Mrs. Andrews, all in favor, all opposed. Motion carries. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.